the first layer of the second portion would be the honeycomb. By laying in the honeycomb in after the first cure, we would avoid having entrapped resin in the cells of the honeycomb. The peel ply will be placed directly against the resin surface. A peel ply is used because it will not stick to the cured part. In this case, we decided to use a porous nylon peel ply, which would allow resin to pass through these tiny holes throughout the entire surface. We therefore needed a bleeder breather layer to absorb the excess resin as well as to direct the flow of vacuum. Finally, we would need the bag itself. The second step in advanced laminating is to pre-cut and prepare your materials. When you are laminating a large project like this one, you do not want to take time to lay out and cut your materials while you are laminating. Because your resin will begin curing as soon as it is mixed, you will need to be prepared to work calmly and quickly. A full-scale template is recommended for all cuts. One template would be needed for each mold half and can then be used for all of your fabric cuts. This template could be made from paper, plastic, or a less expensive fabric. The idea is to avoid miscutting the expensive carbon. You need to create a template and cut the fabric just slightly larger than the mold edge so that you will be trimming down rather than filling in any spaces. If at all possible, you want to cut your fabric in large pieces. Darts or piecing of fabrics will reduce the properties, as will snags or broken fibers. You also need to avoid creases. If you are able to lay down your template into the mold and avoid creases, you will also be able to avoid creases in your reinforcing fabric. There are times, however, that fabric will lay into areas that paper will not. If you only have a slight crease or overlap in your paper template, you would want to attempt to lay in your fabric before resorting to relief cuts. The template can then be laid on the fabric at the appropriate angle and cut with scissors. Final trimming is usually done in the mold to ensure a perfect fit before any relief cuts are made. Relief cuts are made only when a perfect fit is absolutely certain. The pre-cut reinforcements are then rolled, labeled, and set aside in the order in which they will be used. The top shell will be constructed in a single piece and only one template would be required. However, as you can see, the bottom shell would need to cover the wheel housing and would require three pieces. A separate template was made for the wheel housing and two triangular pieces were cut following the exact schedule for the lower half of the mold. A separate full-scale template was also made to cut the Nomex honeycomb. The template for the honeycomb of the lower shell was cut two inches shy of any outer dimensions of the part. This would effectively seal the honeycomb and give the part better resistance to inner laminar peel and shear forces. The two inch reduction would also allow the inner skin to form a strong mechanical bond to the outer carbon fiber skin. This template was also laid in the mold to verify that it could be placed in one sheet without patching or requiring darts. The template was then traced on the honeycomb and it was cut with a razor blade. The edges of the honeycomb were beveled somewhat so the transition area would not be as abrupt and likely to entrap air pockets. The cut sheet of honeycomb was also rolled, labeled, and set aside for use in the proper mold half after the correct number of layers of carbon fiber had been applied. Finally, you will want to pre-cut all of your vacuum bagging materials. Unlike your reinforcements or honeycomb, these need to be considerably larger than your part to allow enough room for sealing and adjustments. It is not necessary to use a template for your vacuum bagging materials. Just be sure that you have allowed more than enough to cover your part and build the bag. Cut your vacuum bagging materials before you begin laminating and also set them aside in the order that they will be used. The third step of advanced laminating is the same as for any molding process, which is to prepare your molds with mold release agents. You must take time to properly prepare the molds. As you will see when these parts are released later in this video, you do not want a spot to stick. These molds were waxed with six coats of wax and sprayed with two coats of PVA. We are ready to begin the sixth step of molding, which is to laminate your part. The top shell was not as complex as the lower shell. We want to show you the top shell in its completed form. As you can see from the outlines, the honeycomb was placed in strategic strips for structural support. Because these strips would only have a single layer of graphite and resin on top, we decided to vacuum bag the lamination in one portion. 
After the shell was released from the mold, however, the honeycomb strips could not be seen from the top. The surface was smooth and the top shell was complete. There were additional secondary operations to perform, which we will show you at the conclusion of this video. The layup we are about to document is the lower shell of the super mileage racer. This was more complex than the upper unit and will serve as a better instructional tool because this shell will be made in two cures. We will first laminate the outer skin and vacuum bag it until it is fully cured. After it is cured and the vacuum bagging materials are removed, the honeycomb and inner plies will be bonded in place. We do not recommend laminating a full sheet of honeycomb into the outer skin when using wet layup techniques because the cells will fill with resin. It is best to allow the outer skin to cure, then bond the honeycomb and inner skin to it later with epoxy. Because of our difficulty releasing the top shell, we decided to make some additional mold modifications, as this student explains. Since the uh, last time when we pulled the mold out, we had trouble with it because of the surface tension though. The shell would stick to the mold. Now, by, by having these holes, these are about a quarter, uh, quarter of an inch diameter. Uh, we can have knockout dowel pins in there, so it'll be easy to pop out. To begin the layup of the outer skin of the bottom shell, we assembled the first four pre-cut layers of carbon fiber near the fabrication area. The first layer was placed into the mold dry. This way it could be accurately positioned before applying any resin. While we were placing the fabric, another student was mixing the epoxy. As soon as the epoxy was mixed, we had to become aware of the time. Again, we're most concerned with getting along here. And we're going to have to work pretty hard to get that saturated, okay? We knew that the resin would want to pool on the bottom. I had decided not to apply a surface coat and instead allowed the resin to saturate the graphite from the top. We would be vacuum bagging out the excess resin, and I believe we could adequately saturate this surface layer without a surface coat. We still didn't want any dry spots, of course. I was more concerned that we would not get enough resin into this layer or that we would trap air pockets. After the bottom was saturated from the top, we poured resin down the sides. This created a surface coat where it was needed on the sides without pooling in the bottom. The key was to pull the resin up and keep it from running into the bottom. We could work the resin up the sides with squeegees to eliminate excess. 